Okay, hi, welcome. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to do a quick uh, example of how to set up uh, Visual Studio Code and what are known as uh, remote development containers within Visual Studio Code. Okay, so in order to do this, you need to do these four steps. Uh, install and configure Docker, uh, create a GitHub account and install and configure Git, although this might be optional uh, depending on whether we're using GitHub Classrooms or not, uh, but you should go ahead and uh, install Git uh, in any case. Uh, install the VS Code Editor, so we're going to be using this with a extension VS Code called Remote Development Containers, or, or Dev Containers for short, which uses Docker as a backend, but we're basically using this to provide a common set of development tools so that everybody's using exactly the same editor, code formatters, uh, and other tools for the assignments for this class, all right? So um, I probably, in, in our class, uh, D2L, I probably gave you a link to a repository. Should have the same or similar instructions um, like these. So, um, um, but yeah, here, you know, we, we've got links to the, to the sites you need to go to to download these things to install. I'm going to be doing this on a Windows 10 system. Uh, it should be pretty much the same for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, there might be some slight differences, uh, but, uh, but, but try these out first here. Um, so in particular, you know, we'll start by installing uh, Docker. Um, you, should, you should get the Docker desktop for if you're on Windows or a Mac system. Um, um, make certain that you select your correct um, 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 uh, operating system here. Um, so yeah, by default it came up as a download for Mac. I don't know, but yeah, so I, I would want to download for Windows. I've already got it downloaded. This is pretty big, so it'll take a little while to download. Uh, but I'll show you. And this, all these are just regular installers. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and install this here. I might have to pause the video and come back while this is installing here. Uh, but you should be able to select all the, accept all the defaults uh, for the installation here. Uh, by default now, uh, Docker, if you're using Windows, is I think it's uh, try to install to the WSL2, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, you should go ahead and accept that uh, default. Uh, try and use WSL instead of Hyper-V, okay? So, um, I'm not going to add the shortcuts to my desktop. You can add those if you want to the desktop. Um, and then, you know, the, the download is pretty big, 500 uh, megabytes, so half a gigabyte. Um, so depending on your download speed, it might take a while. The install doesn't take too long, but I'm going to go ahead and pause here and come back when this is done. So. Okay, once uh, Docker Desktop is done installing, um, you'll have to close it off, and it'll actually you need to reboot your system after uh, installing uh, Docker. So um, I will go ahead and close that. Um, I think you have to reboot it here. Um, it, it, it usually sets itself up to uh, uh, restart it by hand. Um, but, but yeah, you may, I'm going to go ahead and start it then because uh, I want to have it running. So when it first runs, I'll show you how this um, it'll ask you to accept a, uh, um, uh, license agreement, kind of a standard thing. Um, so we can just accept that, um, and, um, and that's it. Maybe I misremembered. Maybe we don't have to reboot on this. So, uh, your de Docker desktop should start up. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of problems here because I'm actually running making this video and a thing, but but you should be able to get it up and, and be running for you, all right? So that, that was the first step, uh, getting Docker. That should be about all there is to it, all right? So the second thing is, um, if you don't already have a GitHub account, go ahead and create a, a GitHub account. Um, um, I've already got one, but you want to sign up for one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign up, sign in here. So, um, so, so make certain that... Um, let me just bring up the settings here. So uh, just make a note of, uh, if you're doing these for classes, uh, I'm still having problems with the, the thing here, but if you're doing uh, GitHub Classroom things, using GitHub for classes, make certain that um, 
um, you use your like your real name that I identify that you're identified in on D2L, um, and also you're going to have to have a public email um, um, associated with your account. Uh, make certain that this matches with. Um, I guess you have to look at the account for the email. Where's the? Oh, you have to look at the the email thing. Make certain that when we configure the emails in Git, that uh, your uh, email um, your email address is the same both on GitHub and how you configure it here. Okay. So let me show you um, uh, installing Git. Uh, if if you're um, on Mac or Linux, you probably already have Git client installed, so you can you can skip the step of installing it. Uh, if not, you need to um, uh, and, and you can check by opening up a terminal and doing a Git version here. Um, uh, on Windows, I'm going to use a command line terminal, so you can open up and like do a search for a command prompt. Um, or you, or if you're on Linux or Mac, you should be able to open up a command line terminal. I usually often uh, pin this to my taskbar because uh, we I use terminals a lot. So I can show this to you, you know, so um, before we install it, there's no git recognized, so you'll get a, a similar thing if you don't have it installed on Linux or Windows, um, on Linux or Mac. Uh, but but yeah, if you need to install it on Mac or Linux, it's probably best to use the, the package manager or brew uh, to install it instead of getting it from here. So. Um, but uh, you can open that link and just download it. Um, you know, from Windows, you want to download for Windows. Uh, again, I've already downloaded uh, the Git here. This should be um, uh, a relatively uh, quick install here. Uh, let me pause the video. I'm going to have to re-download it. Maybe I, I downloaded the wrong version here. So let me, let me pause. Okay, um, I'm probably downloaded the wrong one, but yeah, once you get it downloaded, again, this is a standard installer uh, for Git, although it has a lot more kind of uh, defaults. You can select, there, there's one default that I would recommend that you change here. Um, you shouldn't already have this existing here. I've, I've installed this previously, so you shouldn't get any error messages clicking through these. But when you get to the asking about, um, you can have it leave the editor there. You can change all these after the fact. Um, You should let it be able to use Git from the command line. Um, again, this is kind of only if you're on Windows where you usually have to install it from this package like this. So, um, when it gets to configuring the line ending conversions, the default is to, uh, if you're on a Windows system, check out Windows style commit uh, and commit Unix style line endings. Uh, but you probably don't want to do that because we're using these Docker containers that are actually going to be running um, a Linux Unix. So you're actually going to be doing all your development tools and things in a Linux environment. Uh, and this can cause problems if it checks things out with Windows uh, carriage return line feeds in some cases. So it's probably best to change this to check out as is and commit as is, right? Uh, you, again, you can change this uh, after the fact, although you have to go into a git config kind of thing to do that. So, but. Um, if you forget that, don't worry, we can change it for you, but uh, it's best to, to leave those as is. And then everything else, though, um, we just um, keep as the defaults, okay? And um, this should be a relatively quick install then. And once this is finished... Um, then we have to configure a few things, including the most important thing for working with GitHub uh, classrooms is we've got to get a what's known as a secure key, uh, secure shell key generated and uploaded to our settings for GitHub. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to view the release notes or anything. So, so we're finished. So um, again, if you open up a new terminal, if, if Git is installed correctly, no matter what system you're on, Mac or Windows or Linux, you should be able to, to run git commands and do a git version. Okay, and, and we, in particular, we need to can do these git config things from a terminal. Uh, there might be other ways to do this, but the easiest way is probably from the terminal. From a terminal. Uh, so we need to config the the username. This, that's two dashes there. Dash dash global user dot name, and then you need the quotes. Uh, should use your name, but I'm I'm using a 
uh, GitHub account uh, with that uses the name TMEC student here. Um, this is what I was mentioning. So be make certain that your um, email matches, you know, so since my email for this account that I want to be using is Derek plus TMU student at harder.pro, that's what I want to config the user email here. So you don't have to use your tmuc.tmuc.edu address, although if you're creating your account um, by scratch, you know, new, uh, I would encourage you to, to, do, to use your TMUC email address, but but whatever email address you've got for your GitHub account, uh, use it here for the config. So, I, sorry, I continue having um, some problems here. <laughs> Don't, not certain why. Um, and then, finally, um, the important part, we need to generate a secure shell key. So by installing Git, you should, uh, installing Git, it should install this SSH key gen for you. Um, or if we already had Git installed, it should be. So this will generate uh, what's known as an RSEA public private key. Um, you should accept that as the, def the accept the default. So it's going to save this file um, in a .ssh subdirectory under your home directory called id underscore rsa, and there'll be also an id rsa dot pub. Uh, if you're on Windows, especially, don't enter anything for a passphrase, or else you're going to have to be re-entering your password a lot anytime you try to do git commands, like git checkout and things. So just hit return both times. So um, this actually generates a key. So on Windows, your home directory is going to be in C colon users, your username. I'm, I'm, I'm as a user called Vagrant here. Now, uh, you might not be able to see the, the file. So the, the, the .ssh directory starts with a dot here, uh, and that means it's like a hidden directory. So uh, whatever file browser you're using on Windows or Linux, you might have to find um, and tell it to be able to view like hidden items. So you might not be able to see it. So if you view hidden items, you should see a .ssh directory in your home directory. And the, then after doing the, the key gen, there should be two files, like a IDRSA and IDRSA pub. You need to copy this public key uh, from uh, your um, machine onto GitHub. Okay, so um, um, I'm going to open that with, um, let's say, just a notepad or something like that. Just so I guess so it's, it's going to be, this is really, you should treat this kind of like a, a password. Um, you don't really want to share, even though it's the public part of your key. Um, uh, so, so kind of think of it as a password. Um, so I'm just going to take that and copy it. All right. Uh, and then, you know, at this point, I, I assume that you've got your GitHub account created and everything. So, you know, if you go to your settings that I already have up here, go to SSH and GPG keys, uh, you want to create a new SSH key and paste that in there. So you should give a, a good name for the title. So in this case, this is my um, um, uh, uh, BS code uh, dev box. Oops. Sorry, I keep, keep having problems with them. Um, with the uh, Firefox here for some reason. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that key. I didn't copy it. I need to get it pasted in here. Um, and then, you know, give a title so you remember what this is. So this is my VS Code um, um, uh, dev container um, SSH key on um, my Vagrant machine or whatever. So, all right. So I make, make certain that you have that in there. All right. So that, that was the last step for, um, um, for installing and configuring uh, Git. All right. So we should be good at that point. Um, we copied the generated key on there. So the next thing is to install a VS Code Editor. Um, so if you go to that link, again, you know, make certain you download for your, your correct operating system, for Windows or whatever. I've already got it uh, in, uh, downloaded. Um, I'll show you um, then running it. So again, um, this is a, a standard installer on Windows. Uh, 
you may or may not get this message about being run as an administrator. Uh, probably shouldn't make a difference for most people uh, because even if it installs it just for the user, a lot of people usually only use the one user. So, uh, but yeah, you just have to accept the agreement, uh, let it install in the default location where it wants to, um, add it to your path, and install it. So, and this one's also relatively small, so it should be fairly quick to install. So I'll let it install here, um, and we'll just finish. Um, and and you know, since I left that check marked up, it, it went ahead and started it for me, you know. So, but after after it's installed, you should be able to find it in your search menu. Um, and you know, this is another one that I usually like to put on to my uh, taskbar here, so I, I always have it. All right, uh, and then the final. Well, we have some problems on this virtual machine here. So the final. Um, let me go ahead and exit out of some of these. We'll close these off. Um, so then the final um, thing, and I do need to get my code editor running here if I can. Pause the video here. Having too many problems running stuff. Um, so finally, and, and maybe I'll switch to something else to, to show this here. But um, um, uh, we need to get the um, uh, particular extension installed. Install the remote containers extension. Um, so. The way to do that, so on the left here are different things that you're going to learn about using VS Code in this class, but uh, in particular if you go to the extensions, uh, you can go here and pr install it from the website, um, or you can directly install it from the, the, the GUI in VS Code uh, here. So, so if you select this, um, again, I think I'm having problems here. I'm going to pause and then come back after I um, uh, fix some things here um, and show getting this extension installed here. Okay, um, so uh, I have to switch over to some things, but uh, let's finish up here. So the, the final, the, the last step here to, to get uh, everything set up to use the uh, dev containers is to install the remote containers extension uh, from inside of Visual Studio Code. So if you've got your VS Code running, um, um, you should be able to go down to the extensions here. There's lots of ways you can install an extension, uh, but I'm going down here. You might find it. Uh, at the top of your recommended, since you installed Docker, it kind of finds it. But if not, you know, you can always search. So, for example, if we search for a remote container, um, um, we should find it. Make, make certain that you are getting the uh, Microsoft remote containers, you know, so this is kind of getting to a community of different packet extensions for things. But that's the one that we want to install, the, the remote containers by Microsoft for the VS Code here. Um, it should install pretty quickly. So once you've done that, like like I'm showing here, you probably, if this is the first time you've been running VS Code, that'll be the only extension that you have installed here. So. Um, all right, so let's um, um, so, so that's all you need to do to get the thing set up in order to do assignments for this class. Uh, let me show you real quickly then actually using the dev containers to open up a repository and work with it, okay? So there's, there should be a longer video for doing the practice assignment uh, showing these steps here. Um, but I'm going to, um, if you have a repository that's set up in order to use these uh, dev containers, um, what you want to do is you need to 
clone the repository as normal. This is the best way that I found to do to work with these. Um, so you want to clone the repository um, as normal. Oh, I'm sorry, a second. I just noticed. Hopefully, this wasn't too far down here. Um, clone the repository as normal. So uh, the the best way to do that is to open up a repository that you want to clone in Visual Studio Code. Go to the code button. And you need to copy and paste the SSH. So make, you know, this depends on you having your SSH key set up correctly. So, uh, so we'll see. You'll be able to check whether you have your SSH working or not by copying the SSH URL. So I'll just copy that. Um, and then what you want to do is, um, uh, if you either go to the Explorer or to the Source Control, you should have an option to clone the repository. Okay, so I'm going to clone my repository. You, you paste that URL here, uh, assign zero or you know whatever your URL is. Hit return. Uh, select. I always put my repositories in a directory called repos. I'm going to select that as the place to clone my this repository into. Um, and you know if your SSH is set up, uh, it should clone that, which is basically making a copy of the repositories from GitHub to your local um, system. Um, and you should it should give you the option to open that up. All right. Now here, um, if this is set up to use dev containers, you'll probably get a pop up that says, you know, ask you if you want to reopen this in a container. You can do it that way, reopen this in a container, which is what you want to do. If you're not getting that, you should be able to open up this um, repository in a container. So what you want to do, if, if you go down to here underneath extensions, after you install the remote containers extension, you should see that there's a remote explorer. Um, so we can also find it and open that folder in a container from here as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. So uh, again, if we select a folder that has one of these .dev containers in it that you want to open um, um, in a container, so I select the folder and say open. Um, and this should, um, you'll have to say that I trust this folder um, and continue. But that should open it up inside of a Docker dev container here now. Um, although, the first time you do this, um, which I am doing it here, um, this may take some quite a bit of time here. So normally this will open up pretty quickly, but the first time it actually has to build, download stuff and build the container and things. Okay, so I, I'm probably not gonna wait for this whole video for this to do it. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you open up the log, you'll see it doing a bunch of building stuff and downloading things and stuff like that. Once it's done though, you'll you'll have it open up in Visual Studio Code, but it'll be actually opened up in this Linux uh, development environment container with all the build tools that you need for uh, doing assignments and projects and things. Um, all right, so that's the end of this video here. Hopefully that, that was enough information for you to be able to get things configured. Um, you, if, 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 if you're happy with these things, uh, if you think you got everything set up, you should start be able to work on assignments now. Uh, most likely if you're in one of my classes, I'll have like a practice assignment zero which is the next video or the next thing that you want to do at this point. All right, that's it, and I will see you guys later then.